You know, for a lot of people, 19, sorry, 2020 and 2021 have been such a, a write-off. For some people, it feels like your life's gone so many steps backward. I know for churches all around the world, that's what it feels like. Like this COVID and the way it's ravaged so many different things just takes people backwards. Of course, there's business people in our church who have been mightily blessed during this season. There's other people who God's given miracles that has been for you personally, a real testimony and story, but for many, many other people. I'll tell you what can happen. What can happen is two years, two years of, well, frustration, discouragement, disappointment, without us even knowing, our faith, our expectation could be lowered. So all of a sudden, what we were believing God for, we're so used to a new reality that we're bringing our faith and our believing down to the level of this new reality. I've always believed, never bring your theology, never bring your theology down to the level of your experience. Be committed to lifting your experience up to your belief, your theology, your faith, your expectation. Don't stop believing for miracles. Don't stop believing for victory. Don't stop believing God to bring blessing and fruitfulness and success into your life. Don't stop believing for healing. Don't stop believing for miracles. Don't stop believing for incredible favour in Jesus' Name. That's what we're gonna believe for. And so I wanna pray it into your life right now. And if you find that just slowly, slowly, slowly your faith has lowered, your expectation has lowered down to what we're seeing around and about us. I'm encouraging you to look into the face of Jesus and decide that's where your faith is, that's where your hope is, your strength is in the Name of the Lord. So we're gonna worship a little more. And if you really, are, you can understand what I'm seeing here, just focus literally on Jesus Himself. Think about the power of the Holy Spirit and then Put your expectation there. Let's believe in the mighty Name of Jesus that tonight people's spirits will be lifted and our expectation of God will grow in Jesus' Name. Amen. service is always about 20 the next year, the next year. So you know what, I'm going to take a moment right now. We can't anoint you with oil, but some of our pastors can go up these stairs and put their arms, their hands <laughs> towards sections of the crowd like that. And we can believe in Jesus' Name that God will in your life make 2023 a year of turnaround. Do you know what? I love Luke 4, 19, where it's speaking of Jesus and His mission on earth. And it says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. To what? Proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. 2023, I proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Father, we speak that favour into existence. Pastors, come on, spread out around the crowd. Get up these stairs and raise your arms towards whole sections of the crowd. Right now, we're believing for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be your guide in Jesus' Name. We're believing for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to fill your life. We're believing for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To break the power of darkness, to break the yoke in Jesus' Name. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank You, Lord. We praise.
stillness. Keep your hands raised toward heaven if you want to do that. Just think about your expectation, your belief. I've been speaking about the year of the Lord's favour. Your expectation, your belief for 2023. Specific things. Specific things. Prayers that you're believing in 2023. God will answer. I believe He'll give you one. Then He'll give you two. Then He'll give you three. Then He'll give you, oh, I keep saying 2023, I'm sorry. I'm a year ahead of myself. I just got a note, 2022. That's because I live in the future. It's because I'm prophetic. So next year is only 2022, right? (laughs) Oh, that's good. Okay. Same deal, we're not finished. Come on, raise your hands, raise your hands. 2022, come on. I'm gonna believe one thing, two things, three things that God will put on your heart. Specific things you're believing God's favour on your life for this coming year. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God putting stuff on your spirit to believe for. Let's believe for some of those impossible things. Young people coming back to the Lord. Mental health battles with their kids. Seeing a real breakthrough and a victory. Favour coming back into your business. Favour coming back into your work. Healing for your marriage. Breakthrough in your personal life. Addictions broken in Jesus' Name. Chains falling off. Thank you, Jesus. Spiritual breakthrough. Come on, let's sing.
of God's Spirit poured out. Would you not agree? It was prophesied that in the latter times, God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And you know what? That's an incredible thing. And I just felt while we were worshipping tonight to remind us yet again that we are surrounded. Um, we are worshipping a God who is God of the angel armies. He is God of the angel armies. And you know, this isn't what I'm prepared to say to you, but I felt it. You know what? Sometimes in life, you don't feel like singing. Sometimes you don't have the capacity to stand and declare the beautiful songs and the beautiful truths that are in the songs that we sing in this house. But you know what? It's okay. The Spirit of God would say, it's okay for you to come and to stand and to allow the company, the great company of believers alongside of you, to allow the angels, the God of the angel armies, the angel armies to carry you and the great host of heaven to carry you you. And so you might feel weakened tonight and we're going to worship. We're going to go in and out of worship and declaration of truth. But I want to encourage you tonight. It's okay for you to stand there. Better still if you open your mouth and begin to praise because praise is a pathway. But if you need to stand because you're overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed. It's okay for the brothers and the sisters, the brethren, our family, our spiritual family here tonight online to carry you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 You know what? I just want to share a verse. So just stand with me for a few moments. But you know what? We all have verses that um, I think come easily to mind when we want to minister to people or we want to share pastorally with people. And one such verse for me is Isaiah chapter 9. It comes to mind. It resonates always. I've spoken on it many times. It comes easily. But I want to read it to you tonight. It's going to go on the screens and it says, For unto us a child shall be born. We know and love these verses. We pull them out at Christmas time. Yes, I do. But nevertheless, it is a proclamation and a declaration, a prophetic utterance that became truth when Jesus Christ entered this world. And so it says, For unto us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And there shall be no end to the increase of his government and his peace. He shall rule on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From that time forward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall accomplish this. And you know what? Packed within that passage is no end of revelation, not least the fact that a son has been given unto us. A son has been given to us, to you, to me, to the likes of all of us. A son, he is personal and he has been given to you wherever you are. And you know what? There is so much wisdom and so much truth. What is not to love in that proclamation? You know, Scripture, the Bible, it teaches so much about the nature, the character, the, the providence of Almighty God. But you know what? These words, these simple words are a declaration. What is not to know and understand about wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. And so this afternoon for you, I lay on my bed and I pondered these verses and I asked the Lord to speak to me. When it comes to wonderful Counselor, I felt the Spirit of God say that there are people within tonight. And you know what? You need divine counsel because basically earthly counsel and earthly wisdom is not doing it for you. Earthly counsel, earthly wisdom is not bringing the peace to your soul that you need. It is not bringing, it is not fortifying you. It is not giving you the stature to stand in these days. And so I believe that the Spirit of God would say to you tonight, humble yourself, humble yourself and surrender your mind. Surrender your mind, your wrestle, your thinking, your process, and you're trying to figure it out. Surrender it to the Spirit of God and allow wonderful Counselor to come alongside of you. If not tonight, tonight when you get home and the weeks that are ahead, when it comes to mighty God, you know, Brian has always taught us over the, you know, the, the length of our days together, church. He has always taught us there's two dynamics to life. We're taught to become over, to be overcomers, right? We're taught to be overcomers. God says, you know what? You can overcome. In Christ, in my Word, with my Holy Spirit alongside, you can overcome. But then also He is taught, the Scripture teaches that there is a God who is a deliverer. And we sometimes need a deliverer because there is no way out. And I believe that the Holy Spirit would say to you tonight, be still yet again and know that He is God. And know that you can trust a mighty God who is able to deliver. I may as well speak that into my own heart right now. 
because that's where we are. When it comes to everlasting Father, oh my goodness, if you missed Gary Clark's message this morning, church, I implore you, I compel you to listen to it because it is a profound message for this season in our church. But you know what? Jesus came for one reason. He came for one reason, and that was to reveal the heart of the Father. He came to reveal the heart of the Father, Abba Father, which means Abba Daddy. And I feel compelled by the Holy Spirit to tell you a story. And many, many years ago on a night like this in the old Hill Centre, way back in the day, we had a ministry night like this. And I remember the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came so present to me. And you've heard this story before, but nevertheless, it felt like I was standing on the edge of the throne room of God, standing on the edge looking in just looking in and I felt the Holy Spirit come alongside and He literally nudged me and He said, you know, you can go in, you can go in. You can go in, you can sit at the Father's feet, you can sit, you can lean against His knees, you can even climb up into His lap. And I just wanna encourage you tonight, church, that there is an everlasting Father and God is many, many things. He is holy, He is righteous, He is all of these things, but I'm telling you above and beyond anything, He is an everlasting Father to you. And I believe the Holy Spirit would encourage you to understand that with deeper revelation in the days that are ahead. And then finally, Prince of Peace. He is Prince of Peace. And you know, Peace is a person and His name is Jesus. And um, you know, this world, allow me to be bold, church, this world no longer feels safe. It no longer feels safe. You know, it doesn't matter where your geography is. Changing geography doesn't necessarily make people feel safer. Changing jobs doesn't necessarily make people feel safer. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, the spirit of Antichrist is in the earth. Jesus said it was already in the earth. Spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of lawlessness has been unleashed with greater vengeance on the earth. So wherein do we find our safety, church? Running away doesn't, you're not gonna feel safer by running away. Your safety is found in the person of Jesus Christ. He is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And so I just believe that the Holy Spirit wants to draw near tonight for us to stir up our faith and lean in to wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace in Jesus' Name. And you know what, if you're here tonight, I'll just take one angle, but if you're here tonight and you need divine counsel, Earthly counsel, earthly wisdom, figuring it out in your own strength is not working. I wanna implore you, I wanna pray for you in Jesus' Name. So if that's you tonight, why don't you just raise your hand or your heart, just lift it towards me. You need divine counsel in any area of your life. I am praying, Father God, I am praying, Father God, that You will walk amongst us as we worship You. You will walk amongst us. Lord, I know this of You, Jesus. I know that You can walk amongst the the aisles and the roads. I know that You can draw near and that You can actually speak into our hearts. Prince of Peace, we welcome You in this place. Prince of Peace, we declare that You are our Lord. You are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Come on, let's just sing, sing this again. Beautiful.
It's the only word that transcends language. It's the only word that is the same in the languages of the earth. It's the only word that Christians, believers all around the globe sing. Portuguese, Spanish, Asian languages, African languages, Greek, Italian, you name it. I mean, there's a myriad of languages out there. The hallelujah, it reigns supreme. It reigns supreme is a declaration of God's majesty, God's glory. It exalts Him. Hallelujah. People try to use it in, a, I don't know, sometimes a, a way that you know, people go, hallelujah. But big picture, there's only one thing. It's worship, it's praise, and it's beautiful. We're gonna sing it one more time, but you know what? God's gonna to minister to people in the back rows. Sometimes you think you're safe in the back rows, but it's a dangerous place to be when God decides to move. So we're gonna believe as we sing this one more time. Now, if I was you, I'd, I'd have my, my spirit ready, my heart ready, because God's gonna to minister to people up there. If you're broken hearted, I believe that God can literally heal your broken heart tonight. If you came in here depressed and discouraged, I believe you can walk out uplifted and see light at the end of the tunnel and see faith and see hope. I believe that God tonight, no matter how you came in here, you can go out in a totally different frame of mind, a totally different place. Hey, come on, let's sing hallelujah. as we continue to believe God to do awesome things in Jesus' Name, amen. Thank you, boss. Amen. I uh, was praying this afternoon and uh, really felt like the Lord kind of dropped in my heart a word for our youth. And you know, our youth at Hillsong Church has always been such an environment for raising incredible leaders. Incredible leaders in the church, incredible leaders in business, incredible leaders in families, and all of that sort of stuff. And I really felt in my heart to prophesy revival into 2022 over our youth group. Over obviously Togs, and, uh, or the two Togs, and, uh, and Robert Amanda, and, and Drew and uh, Virginia, PK and Crystal, I honestly believe that God is about to breathe in our youth like never before. And I, I wanna say to all of our, all of our young people that the Bible says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse three, talking about prophecy. It says, prophecy is used for encouraging, strengthening and comforting. So simple, yet sometimes we confuse something that I believe God has called us to keep so simple yet so powerful. When we talk of comforting, when we talk of strengthening, talk of encouraging, we're talking about speaking words into people's life. And you can sit there and go, well, which part's encouragement? Which part's prophecy? All I know is you're not gonna get any of it from the devil. So it must be from the Spirit, amen? 
And I believe that our youth are called to be prophetic. I believe that our youth are called to speak over one another's life. It's like shooting arrows into the enemy's camp, saying you cannot keep them down. You cannot have them going into depression or whatever it may be, because God's Spirit is prophetic and everything about His Spirit is prophetic, amen? So I'm gonna prophesy revival into our youth come 2022. So if you're a youth leader in this place, I'm gonna ask you just to raise your hand because I wanna pray for you right now. I wanna pray that there'll be a revival in spirit, that there'll be a revival as you read the Word of God, that it'll get in you, that it'll feel like Jeremiah to the point that you can't hold it down, you cannot contain it, you have to unleash it. Father, I thank You for each and every youth leader in this room right now. Father, I thank You that You've called them to lead our youth, to speak life into our youth, to raise our youth, to be the next leaders in Jesus' mighty Name. I thank You for what You're doing in and through each and every youth pastor, each and every RDG leader. And we speak revival into our youth. May we sense a presence like never before. May we sense Your Spirit like never before. May we see You do the miraculous like never before. In and through Friday, Friday night meetings, Father, I pray that people will be healed, that many will come to know Jesus, that people will walk out going, what just happened? What just happened? Because heaven just touched earth. I thank You for all that's ahead, for each and every leader in Jesus' mighty Name. And a faithful church said together, Amen, Amen and Amen, Amen. Bobby just mentioned about the revelation of the Father. And I believe that's so important for us. You know, 168 times in the Gospels alone, Jesus reveals the Father. So you get an idea of what Jesus came to earth to do, and that is to reveal a God that's a Father. And I believe it's the greatest revelation you'll ever have as a child of God, knowing that you've got a Father that backs you. You know, years ago, I used to, whenever I was alone with one of my kids, I used to always tell them, you're my favourite, don't tell the other two. Until Lily one time, she was three years old, she told the boys, Dad says that I'm his favourite and the boys were old enough to know. We've heard that one for many years as well. But I, I feel like there's someone in this room right now, you need to know you're his favourite. Don't tell the person next to you. Don't tell the rest of the church, you're his favourite. You're his favourite. Huey, Huey, you're his favourite. You're his favourite. I honestly believe, he's gonna bust me up now, but I honestly believe the extravagant love of your Father, your Heavenly Father, is about to be poured on you like never before, so that you can then outpour it on others. As you are grace, so you will grace. As Gary preached this morning, as I have loved you, Jesus said, so love one another. And I, I feel like God's saying to you tonight that you're His favourite. Don't tell anyone else. Just before we go back into worship, you know, the Bible says in, in Psalm 73, verse 16 in the message, it's the, the Psalmist is looking around at what's going on in the world and cannot work it out. And it says that, I got a splitting headache trying to work it out until I entered His presence that I saw from His perspective. John on the island of Patmos in Revelation chapter four, he's out there, he's alone, no doubt, head down, prisoner. And God's, Jesus appears to John and I want everyone to catch this because we're about to go there and worship for one moment. And, and Jesus says to John, John, come up here and I will show you all that's about to happen. Notice that, come up here. Come up here, it's not I'm coming down there. It's, it's you come up here, get a heavenly perspective of what's going on. And I believe right now, as we go back into worship, as D leads us back into worship, that you're gonna come up here and see a heavenly perspective maybe of what 2020, 2021 look like. But you're gonna see all that's ahead for you in 2022, amen? Come up here and see all that's ahead for you in Jesus' mighty Name. Come on, D, lead us forward. Let's worship Lord, come up here. Holy as it is in heaven, it is in me. I'll sing holy, Lord, and I'll sing holy, holy. My heart cries. Oh! 
talk to the worshipers and our worship leaders and our musicians and all of you here as well who are part of our worship team and uh, incredible musicians, production teams as well. Someone doing these lights here, someone doing this microphone, someone there making sure it's coming through that monitor. Well, you know what? And our television people, and I could keep going. There's so many behind the scenes people making this happen. You know what I'm believing? Spiritual renewal for you all. I believe next year, collectively, as we lead the world in worship, collectively, you're gonna have a fresh thing in your heart. You're not gonna be coming out of old wine. It's new wine, new wine. New wine's dangerous. You know, it's dangerous. And that's what I'm believing for, for you to just get dangerous when it comes to stepping out of faith and leading people and praise and worship. But main thing I haven't believed before is you'll, you know, just fall in love with what you do again. And, and then really you'll think, you know what? This is the best thing I could be doing with that gift. And that is leading people and praise to the eternal God, to the eternal King. So can you put your hands toward all of our worshipers? Hold it over here if you wanna raise your hands that way. Of course, they're all, all over the church and other campuses to other locations tonight. Rachel here in the front row, one of our absolute best. Come on, let's pray for them. In fact, Cass, why don't you come and pray for them? You come and pray for them. See if you lead them all. Let's believe God. New wine, fresh spirits. Holy God, we are so blessed that we get to call You ours, that we bring worship to You that is pleasing and acceptable. God, we love You, we honour You for who You are. And I pray for this team, God. I pray that Your hand would be on them. Lord, that there would be a fresh anointing of Your Spirit. God, that You would pour Your Spirit out on them. God, that they would prophesy, that they would dream dreams, that they would have visions. God, no longer would we do what we have done before, but that we would break loose, God. We would bring You the honour and the glory that You deserve. God, I pray right now for new wineskins, God. No more doing things the way that we've done them, but that we will take authority, God. We would see people saved as we sing. We would see people healed as we sing. We would see songs that break chains, that bring captives home, that we would release prisoners from blindness and darkness. And God, I pray right now for new authority, a new sensitivity and a new love for Your Son, Jesus Christ. By Your Spirit, may You bring change in Jesus' Name. Amen. And you know what, church, today, it's the second Sunday of Advent. And the word that the church puts across this Sunday is peace. And I love that Bobby talked about that because when Jesus came, the angels in heaven, they declared good news on earth to all mankind and peace on earth. And when you and I look around, it can look like anything but peaceful at the moment. But the truth is, when Jesus left earth and He went to heaven, He said this, my peace I leave to you. I do not give as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I don't know about you, but there are so many things in the human heart that can be troubled. I think about you TC guys, and I wondered if you were troubled by the way that your addiction has actually wreaked havoc in your families. And I think about people here who are facing Christmas with custody battles and just wondering whether it's gonna be okay. I think about grade six kids like Cohen Kelly and Indy Douglas and the girls that are in grade six trends furring into high school going, that change, it can rock your peace. Or maybe you're a year 12 and you're going, you've got new jobs. Like there are so many things, right, that we can be troubled about. But Jesus, He is the Prince of Peace. He promises peace to His church. He promises to actually cultivate peace in you as you let the Holy Spirit have His way. And as I was walking around the back, like Brian, I actually believe that peace is coming to you right now. That the Lord intends for people who have been troubled to actually find themselves as we pray and as we sing over you, having peace that passes all understanding, which is what the Bible says. And so truth is, we can all be troubled. So I'm gonna ask you, think about what it is that troubles you and lift your hands to heaven. And I'm lifting my hands first because I have troubles. I'm gonna pray for us. Father, I pray right now for Your church. God, may she be one that has supernatural peace. 
Father, for the things that You know that we wrestle with in the night times that cause us to wake up, that cause us to get anxiety and anxious. God, I pray that we would be a people who put Your Word into practice, that we would not be anxious, but through everything, by prayer and petition, we would make our requests known to You and the peace that passes all understanding would guard our hearts and our minds. And so God, I pray tonight for inexplicable peace in Your church in Jesus' Name. And then here's the other thing. Jesus said when He went, I'm going and I'm gonna leave you my Holy Spirit. And the reason that I'm leaving my Spirit with you is so that you would be witnesses to Jesus Christ. You know, He is beautiful. He is our Lord and our Saviour. He has come to give you life and life in abundance. We have a story to tell church and it is good news to everyone who is perishing. And my challenge tonight is that we wouldn't keep it to ourselves or keep it in this church. But instead, like Pastor Gary preached this morning, that we would be people who stand and go, God, here I am, send me. Send me to Dural and to Cherrybrook and to Blacktown and to Castle Hill and to Quakers Hill and to all of the suburbs where we find ourselves, not into ministry that has microphones, but into ministry that knocks on doors and invites people to your tables and actually sees you and me called to be the witnesses of Jesus Christ. And so we're gonna sing and I am gonna believe that the Lord would fill you with great courage and boldness to be His witnesses. And that right now we would begin to be a church again that is a bringing church that does not keep the Gospel to ourselves, but takes it out to the streets and the world would know that Jesus Christ is alive and well in His church at this time in history. And so why don't you sing where? Because I know you love me and I know you found me and I know church as a young mixed up teenager and all these years later as a dad husband I can see he's still in love <laughs> you know and a man of God and a pastor Alan came onto our team a few years ago to look after all the properties and the team and the staff so the beautiful gardening you see up there and all of the other he came on doing that and it was brilliant at it but he had a pastoral gift that in the end excelled even his management gifts. So today, part of our pastoral team, but this is the point, you know, faithfulness. Years and years and years and years and years of making choices and staying true to what you believe and who you are, both of you. <laughs> I just believe that we still haven't even seen all that God's got for you. We still haven't seen. We haven't yet had a glimpse of all that God's got for you. 
God rewards faithfulness. He loves faithfulness and He rewards faithfulness. And if I was to describe Alan Lindley, I'd say he's a faithful man. He's faithful as a pastor. He's faithful as a husband. He's faithful as a dad. He's faithful to his friends. I'm going to lay hands on you. Both of you. <laughs> he said, I'll make you cry. It'd be a failure if I didn't. <laughs> Come on. Lord, I just thank you for this couple. Lord, I thank you the hand of God is on their lives. Lord, I thank you. You know their very deepest prayer. Lord, you know the things closest to their hearts. Maybe some things that no one else even knows. And Lord, I just thank you for their faithfulness, the huge blessing they are to our church. And Lord, I believe that you have things prepared for them in the heavenlies that they don't even know yet. And we believe for a release of your power and your promise, the Lord, into their lives. And Lord, I believe you'll open doors they never expected, none of us could have expected. And the Father, they'll walk through them boldly and they will see you fulfill your promise, your power in their lives. And I thank you for it in Jesus' Name. Amen. 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 Oh, sing it one more time. We cry holy. We'll sing holy, 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 the earth cries holy as it is in heaven. So let it be as God. Oh. We'll sing holy, 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 the earth cries holy as it is in heaven. So let it be. Lee Burns came up, heads up Hillsong College, and his closest if you like, uh, senior leader in our college is Duncan Corby. He's only gonna take a couple minutes, just a short time, but he's got something in his heart he wants to share, amen. Uh, thanks, Pastor Brian. How are you, church? In the short time that we've got left, I believe that God, some, God has put something on my spirit for us. I assume you know what a centrifuge is. A centrifuge a centrifuge is something that spins, right? Pastor Brian knows what a centrifuge is. A centrifuge is something that spins. And as it spins, there is a force called a centrifugal force that wants the, the thing that is spinning to be forced outwards. And in something like your car tire or the moon orbiting the earth, that centrifugal force is balanced by a centripetal force that causes it to come back to the centre. For the moon, that force is gravity. Why am I saying that? Well, I think about the world that we've been in the last couple of years and the effect that it's had upon our lives and upon the church. It is like the world has started spinning faster. The forces that are causing things to scatter have increased. And I think we all know what those forces are. And for us as a church to move into 2022 with everything that God has got for us, we need a counterbalancing force to bring everything back together. Tonight, we're having a Holy Spirit night. The Bible tells us that we are one in the Holy Spirit. But that Oneness is not achieved but by, just by saying it. It is achieved by actively moving in the Spirit. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The Spirit is given to bind us together. The gifts of the Spirit are given to bind us together. The fruit of the Spirit is given to bind us together. The leading of the Spirit is given to bind us together. And 
for the remainder of this year and into next year, I want us to pray together as a community for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, an active, powerful, dynamic, unstoppable movement of the Holy Spirit that will bind us together, that will counteract the forces in our world trying to fracture God's people and bind them together in a spirit of unity, a spirit of love, a spirit of peace, a spirit of hope, a spirit that can change the world. Are you ready, church? I would love everybody now to be on your feet because we're gonna pray. We're gonna finish this night together praying, Holy Spirit, come. Come in our church, come in my life. I make myself available to you to move through me for the sake of your church. People of God, let's pray. Let's lay hold of God tonight. Let's call heaven down. We want God to move. Holy Spirit, come. Come on, cry out tonight for the power of the Spirit to be at work in our midst. In Jesus' Name, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, Come, Holy Spirit, be amongst Your people. Don't just me pray, you pray. Cry out to God, lay hold of God. Desperately grab a hold of Him, bring Him down into our midst. Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, be present among Your people. Now Lord, fill Your people, fill Your people with Your power. Fill your people with your presence. Fill your people with Holy Spirit gifts. Holy Spirit, come down amongst your people. Rend the heavens and come down. God, move by your power, move by your mind. Holy Spirit, fill your people with new gifts, with new power, with new life, with new energy, with new strength, with new faith, with new hope, with new desire, new perseverance, new strength, new faith, new passion, new vision. Holy Spirit, come down. Holy Spirit, come down. Rend the heavens and come down amongst Your people. Your hungry people cry out for more and more and more and more. An unstoppable flow of Your Spirit coursing through Your people. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come amongst your people. In Jesus' mighty name and a faithful church said together, so be it. Amen. Amen.